So this is a dig quad. It's a four channel and secretly five channel in this revision, which we've been used to for about a year now, or a little less, little slightly less than a year, but still. Um, Cause you have four LED channels here and you have a Q1R port here, which is secretly your fifth LED channel. Uh, but the main things about it is it can handle at least 30 amps continuous using its input terminals and then has five fuses and seven output terminals. So some of the terminals are shared, as you can see here with the lines. So one and two are shared and three or four are shared. So if you have edge connections or middle connections for power injection, you can use those. And you've been able to get these boards using either. And I got some new packages in and I thought, let's do an unboxing experience. <laughs> Uh, so you can do that either with a Quinn LED ESP32 AB, and that stands for antenna board. And that means that this little black thing is here because it has a board antenna on the ESP32. And the rest is my custom ESP32 module. So next to that, you can also get it with a AE. So Quinn LED ESP32 AE, or if you get a dig quad, it would be a... Um, Quinn LED dig quad AE because the, then the ESP32 is included and this one doesn't have that black piece here because it's that well that's the board antenna and this has an external antenna so you get a little external antenna with it that you can uh, plug in over here right and then there is a third variant since the beginning of this year uh, so that's this guy and this is the Quinn LED ESP32 ABE and ABE stands for antenna board so it's the same as this guy, uh, but the only difference is, let me just put the antenna here, is that it has a ethernet hat basically on top of it. So you can, well, hook up wired instead of using wireless. And well, those are the three variants uh, of the current ESP32s you can get. These are all full ESP32s, no S2, C3, or whatever kind of variant, variant they're the, the normal ESP32, which is still the most powerful for most of the stuff. They're all four megabyte variants, but for WLED usage, what it's mostly used for, there we go, um, the four megabyte variant is fine. Uh, and alternative firmware you can run is ESP Pixel Stick, but that's also fine with uh, four megabytes. So depending on your situation, if you have fine Wi-Fi coverage, you're mostly just going to use the app to control the effects and stuff. Just get a normal variant. It's also the cheapest. If it's going to be in a more challenging situation wirelessly, or you also want to do some real-time stuff and real, so sending data to it from X lights or something like that, often the external antenna version is the best choice. And then if you're mainly going to be using it for real-time effects, so X lights and Christmas shows and stuff like that, then the Ethernet version is certainly a good step up because that makes that kind of scenario a whole lot better. And each of these just basically fits on top of your Quinn LED Dig Quad or Dig Uno for that matter. Uh, this is a Dig Uno. It's a lot smaller, but it only has two channels and a whole lot less power injection and stuff like that. And well, uh, you can even upgrade it later if you're like, ah, wait, you, you know, but, Dutch is sneaking in, damn it. Uh, I'm more into, into real-time effects now. Okay, sure. Then you just put the Ethernet version on top of it, and you don't have to replace the dig board. And I know supplies are limited currently. We're working on that to get them in plenty supply, so you can always order a different version. And then you can even upgrade an existing dig quad to an Ethernet-connected one, for instance. And, you know, especially if you have a few boards some where wireless range is fine, you can use the board antenna and others, you can switch it out for one with an external antenna. Uh, that way, there's always loads of options to, to for the scenario you're working with, basically. Now, we were talking about the dig quad. And of course, the announcements for today are about the dig quad. And that is that this has always been the V2. Uh, I think, well, I'm not sure you can read it here, but this has been the, the V2. This is an R6B. I believe I also have an R7 somewhere. It doesn't matter. Um, recently, on live streams especially, I've been showing you this guy. 
And this guy was a prototype which has a few small changes uh, versus the V2. Now, as you've probably seen from the title of this video, <laughs> this video is titled V3. So let's do a V3 unboxing experience. And uh, well, let's take, you know, let's hook it up, configure it and uh, see how that works. So this is the V3 and this is actually Okay, I took it out of the packaging to look at it myself first, but this one hasn't been turned on yet. This is from the actual production run, right? So there are uh, some notable changes, uh, especially if we compare it to the current or older version, version now. And the main changes are that the input terminals ha have been replaced from these three to being these beefy guys. And then there's only two spots, but you can hook up a lot thicker cables and you can also use crimpton connectors as I've shown in some live streams recently. So that'll make connecting uh, power to the board a lot easier because you can use a lot different kind of connectors. And as I said, those thicker wires. And then uh, one of the most notable other changes, and I'm going to try and see if I can get that into focus. Uh, it's pretty good. If you look at the terminals here, you see that it, they all have this metal lip down here. And especially if you had connectors with ferrules, they sometimes were pretty hard to insert, especially when you went up in wire gauges. 18 gauge was mostly doable, but 16 gauge really became a problem sometimes. So all across all the boards, so Dig Uno, Data Booster, and, this, and these Dig Quads, etc., we've uh, changed to different terminals. Now that needed a lot of testing and finding terminals in large quantities without insane pricing or, you know, I have to order 100,000 at a go, <laughs> uh, was quite difficult, but I think we managed. And as you can see here, these terminals have a much, uh, well, more even, but especially if you push the little lip inside a little bit, a much larger gap uh, through which now a 16 gauge will much more, uh, with a ferrule, will much more easily fit into the screw terminals than a they did on the old ones basically now those uh, are the the main changes to the board as you can see there have been some layout updates and you know text moved over here but all the other features so four channel data channels over here a fifth data channel or a 5.1 volt re uh, relay output over here the 5 volt ext function all of that stays the same and uh, looking at the back it is mostly the same board, but one of the notable changes, there, there are some slight changes, but one of the notable changes is that you see two PTC fuses over here that have been added for extra safety and some tracks have been redone and giving extra clearance and stuff like that. And that is mainly to uh, comply to more, adhere, more regulation standards. So UL, CSA, CE, CE and stuff like that. Now these boards still aren't certified as they are currently, but if you're making a product and you want to use one of my boards in your product, well, uh, let's talk. <laughs> Cause there's certainly options there. Um, so yeah, those, those are the main changes to the board. They're not really spectacular in, in a function wise, but usability has certainly gone up with the new screw terminals, I think. And, um, yeah, I guess that's the main thing for usability. Those new screw terminals really make things easier. Because this is a Quinn LED data booster board. And, uh, well, one of the main features, and it has multiple features, is that there's a little switch here. And as you can see, it says 249 and 33. And you can switch between a 249 or 33 ohm resistor, uh, adapting basically to two scenarios and those have been scoped out and tested by me if you have a 10 meter or 32 feet data wire uh, with a single data wire you want 249 ohm and if it's a combined uh, wire so let's say 18 gauge uh, dash 3 or it's a parallel run of wires attached together or at least ground and signal are very close together for all the way there then you want a 33 ohm resistor. Anyway, uh, that's a side note about the data, the data booster. Uh, those are also in stock in, 
worldwide and Dr. Z's should have a batch of those listed on his website too. Those come with some accessories. You get two fork style crimp connectors to um, basically use here with these M3 size holes. And then you get an M3 size screw with an M3 size. Oh, no, I'm doing it the wrong way around. The screw should be on the bottom. And you can add the power on the back side using the fork terminal, basically. So kind of like that. And you can even bend it a little bit so that it's parallel with the lines coming in and out. Uh, but you don't have to use that. That's an additional feature to do power injection without having to solder, basically. Uh, but yeah, multiple function board for power injection or um, changing the resistor size and stuff like that. There's uh, articles about all this stuff on my website, of course. Uh, and I think I have those linked in the description too. Anyway, back to the dig quad. I don't remember what I was saying, but functionality-wise, it hasn't changed too much. It's just usability improvements, mostly. Now, I've seen some people ask, when will this be available? These are available right now. The board had to grow ever so slightly. I'm not going to, I'm not sure I can even show you on camera, uh, but the new board is a few millimeters wider, uh, but it's really minimal for most cases. I don't think it'll actually matter. Uh, but it, it well, it, it, did, it does have slightly different dimensions because otherwise I just couldn't fit these larger terminals the correct way, basically. Now, there is one other change, and I've been really, really fighting this change, but I could no longer uh, prevent it, and that is that the boards have gotten a price raise. And I really don't like that, and people on my Discord I've talked to this about, no, I don't like it. But uh, the component shortage, uh, basically it's real. <laughs> I don't know what you've been hearing about it, but it, uh, yeah, uh, component shortage is real. Uh, component prices have been raising for me on the back end too. They have been doing so for months, uh, but things are getting kind of nuts. Uh, like I use a buck converter on here and prices for that basically tenfolded. <laughs> Uh, the level shifters, of which there are five on the board because there's five output channels, those have got, I, I believe, three or four times gone up in price. Uh, the new screw terminals cost a different amount, not that much. Uh, but there's all kinds of little components that have gone up in price. Even yeah. so, in order to keep making a little bit of profit, because, you know, I, I got to eat, um, I have raised the prices. Now... Don't worry, it's not that much. The uh, A, A, B version, so the, the version with the antenna board, used to be 3750, and that has now gone up to 3950. And that's purely, well, that's not even all the component increases I got on the back, because that's actually more per board. Um, but I don't want to calculate all of that through to you guys. Uh, but it, it, it got to the point where it was either... Um, stop making them or raise the price because you know um, yeah uh, the dig uno will also get a price raise I'm not sure that's on the websites already or not and even the little data booster will get a little bit of a price raise just to make it sh to make sure I can keep making them basically and You'll have to trust me and believe me on that. I, I get that if you're not in the business of making things, uh, you, you might not be aware of these things or you might not see so. Yeah. Oh, another thing that's totally effed, <laughs> and I think Sion, the unexpected maker, can also chime in on that. Shipping is just... Shipping is broken. Shipping is completely kaput. <laughs> it's just... Um, uh, when I ship stuff to Dr. Z's, it's easily two to three times the price now than it was three, four months ago. And partly that is, of course, the season and, you know, Christmas and, you know. But other than that, it's just uh, I, I send packages and they're stuck at the airport for five days because there just aren't enough flights to take the pa packages with them because of co COVID and all kinds of other reasons. So I'm seeing price raises on all kinds of fronts and I, I really 
tried to stave it off and keep it away. <laughs> uh, but I, I kind of felt um, that I no longer had a choice. And I, I debated about this, maybe stop making them for now. But then again, this situation, I have no clue when this is going to improve. It's currently only getting worse. Uh, it's harder to get components. Uh, components that used to be in stock by the hundreds of thousands are now just eh, 16 weeks waiting time and then double the price. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's not a lot. It's about two bucks a board, depending on which version you get. Uh, the Dig Uno will probably be one to one and a half buck uh, uh, raise per board. It, it's not that much in the overall scheme of things, things, but I do feel kind of bad about it, if that's not obvious by now. Oh, and the list says, hope you keep it running. Money is only a passenger. Yeah, of course, and, and, and I'm not, my main reason for doing this isn't money. Uh, most of you know that. Uh, so, but yeah. I really don't like that I have to ask more money. I'm just going to hide myself in the corner there. <laughs> Anyway, 